It's glorious, Gee. The day has come. It's finally arrived. It's Gee Day. We're making Gee with, well, I'm not going to say with all of that dumpster butter, with some of that dumpster butter. I think I have about eight pounds of butter that we're going to geeify today. Butter from the dumpster. We've got the oven at 225 for sterilizing the jars inside the oven. Alrighty, we have the jars in the oven sterilizing and we don't need a water bath can ghee. The, um, the heat from the jars and the ghee will supposedly, hopefully, create a vacuum seal so that the lids will appropriately adhere. So, we'll just let those sit in there sterilizing them. Well, they're not sterilizing themselves. The oven's sterilizing them. Alright, we'll see 225 and now we unwrap our butter. I'm using the big old stock pot I use for water bath canning. You want a nice heavy bottomed pot. A nonstick surface might be preferable to what I have because I will say your milk solids will sink to the bottom as you melt and boil your butter. And it, it, it's, it, it's, this pot's kind of hard to clean afterwards. It's kind of a pain. So, gee, gee, glorious gee. It's gee, it's gee. It's glorious, Guy. While you've got your jars sterilizing in the oven, you are going to be melting a whole lot of butter. Now, butter, this is all unsalted butter, of course. Butter is made of butter. Butter, butter is made of fat and milk solids and some water, basically. As you melt your butter, the fat will rise to the top and the water will sink to the bottom. And then as it boils, you're gonna be evaporating off the water, right? And it will boil from the bottom. The water will boil up. So you wanna be careful. You don't wanna be looking in your pot thinking, hmm, I wonder when you're gonna boil because this bloop will come up in your face. You don't want a big bloop in your face of water boiling up from the bottom and, and the, the melted fat being all up in your face. So don't put your face in your butter pot. We melt the butter. With me so far? Give it a little stir, make sure it's all melted in there. And then basically we don't keep stirring. We want to keep stirring. Oh, we want to stir, but we don't stir. I keep mine basically at medium, at a medium flame on what my stove has as medium. So it melts the butter, the fat rises to the top, the water is on the bottom, boils off, and then your butter is just boiling around in your pot. It, it, it takes a while, it takes a while for it to geify. You're gonna start to have a foam situation on top. You're gonna have a fine foam and then it becomes kind of a different looking foam. And some people are foam skimmers. And some people don't skim so much of the foam. People I've seen skim foam, just kind of skim a little foam and then discard it, put it on paper towel, get rid of it, get rid of it. I save it. I save my foam just as I save the milk solids that are at the bottom of the pot at the end of the process. And I basically mix them all together and add salt, lots of salt, and just use it as a spread on my toast. That is what I do with my milk solids and my foam. The milk solids, to me, it took me a while to figure out, like, what is that flavor? Because yes, it tastes like butter, and it's delicious, but I finally figured out what it reminds me of, spread on the toast, is butter toffee. That's what it tastes like to me. It's well worth keeping. So once your butter is boiling away, you'll see, and we, we will see, we'll look at it, but you'll see like little tiny specks of milk solids kind of boiling around in there, boiling around, boiling around. You got your foam, you got your boiling around, boiling around. And then you will start to see that the fat is looking clearer clear, clarified, clear, clear, 
You can see through it. So that's when your milk solids are finally sinking to the bottom. Yay, you've got your clarified butter. Skim off the top, skim off the top, skim, skim, skim. I mean, we are going to strain all this through cheesecloth. So if you didn't skim off all the foam, that would be fine. It would get caught up in your cheesecloth, but I, I want to eat the foam with my milk solids in my toast spread because I don't want to waste it. I also find that with the draining and the cheesecloth, a lot of butter, a lot, gets absorbed into the cheesecloth. And um, if you squeeze it out, if you wring it out, a lot more comes out. I need to find some gloves and and do that and show you because it, it's, it's a little it's a little buttery when you do it barehanded let me say but a lot more butter comes out and it just seems so wasteful not to try to extricate that butter from the cheesecloth but we do strain this so when your milk solids start to sink to the bottom you keep an eye out keep an eye out for the clarified butter to just start to turn just a little bit darker, a little bit like it's starting to turn a little bit brown, a little bit, because your milk solids are browning a little bit on the bottom, infusing this lovely flavor and color into your clarified butter, your ghee. It's ghee, it's ghee, it's glorious ghee. You wanna make sure it doesn't go too far because you don't want the milk solids on the bottom to burn. And I have found that at the point where I feel like, okay, it's turning a little bit brown, we're getting that delicious nutty flavor infused, great, turn it off. Some of my milk solids, I won't say they're burned to the bottom of the pan, but they're pretty brown down there. And this pot is not super easy to, to scrub. There, there are ways. One soaks it in water, vinegar, salt, one uses abrasive cleaners, one scrapes it with a big metal spoon. One does lots of things to get this pot clean again. So, uh, yeah, a giant Teflon coated pot might be a nice thing. Once you feel that your clarified butter is the color you want it, why then you stop cooking, turn off the heat, and then you strain your butter through your cheesecloth situation. And I put my cheesecloth in a little sieve on top of a pitcher. So then I can use this pitcher to pour the ghee into the jars that have been sterilizing inside the oven. You know, you, you put your lids on, you're going for the heat induced vacuum seal, right? You have your uh, fans on as well. And you just hope to hear those beautiful popping noises. I had a batch I did, where none of them popped, none of them sealed, none of them. And there was no reason for it. That was just completely unnecessary. I think it's because I was slow in what I was doing. And so maybe things weren't hot enough still to create that vacuum seal. I don't know. But then I just went ahead and water bath canned all of them. And then they all sealed. Now, what is the point of making ghee, you say? Well, besides the fact that it's completely delicious and it's worth making, if for no other reason, just for the milk solid foam combo add salt spread that you're going to put on your toast. Or you could use it in making cookie dough or something like that. I think that would make your cookie dough most delish. Um, but the point, the point, the point. Well, when you have a lot of butter, and we still have a lot from when uh, Frugal Daddy found 168 pounds of perfectly delightful butter in the dumpster, when the refrigeration guy was there at Aldi working on the refrigeration system and they chucked all that butter, um, we still have a lot left. We shared a lot, but we still have a lot left. And I just don't want the freezer taken up by butter forever and ever and ever. That's one thing. This is, I think, a better way to store your butter long term because supposedly it stores indefinitely, i.e. forever, in your jars. As long as it's kept somewhere coolish and darkish so that it doesn't go rancid. I mean, you're not going to store it in a sunny windowsill, although it would be beautiful but you're not going to. So you're increasing the storage time for your butter. You have, you've 
you've cre you create this delicious buttery goodness to use. You can use ghee just as you would use butter. When it's warm in the jar, it's still liquid. When it's cool enough in the jar, depending on what room temperature is in your house, it becomes solid. And you can use the ghee just like butter, but it lasts forever. But remember, this is unsalted, so you probably want it as salt if you like salted butter. I do. Like, I just, I just, I, spreading unsalted butter on toast would not be delightful. It, it would be pointless, in my opinion, for me. Also, big point on the ghee front is the smoking point. When you cook with butter, you know, if you're sauteing something with butter on top of the stove, your smoking point's pretty low. And with ghee, it's much higher. It's almost, I think, almost 500 degrees, I think. I love when the little pieces of paper get stuck in the butter. Hey, but you know what? If you have a little piece of wrapper floating around in there, it probably doesn't matter because you're going to strain this through your cheesecloth. Last stick. And then this pot goes on the stove. And the magic begins. So there we have about eight pounds of butter. Ow. Ow. Yes, I have carpal tunnel. I do. I really do. I'm not making it up. I really, really do. And that kind of hurt. Okay, here we go, out of the stove. That looked weird, but that was for my wrist. So, wait, let me wash my hands and throw all this out before I turn on the heat. Because I turn the heat on to medium, and we start to melt the butter. And once it gets all melty, we'll take a look inside the pot. Well, we can look inside now if you want, but I think you know what it looks like at this juncture. It looks like a bunch of sticks of butter like I just showed you. There you go, butter in pot. It's ghee, it's ghee, it's glorious ghee. Just a few minutes later and we can see that it's melting nicely. The clock on the microwave says 1016. So let's see how long it takes from now until when we are pouring the ghee into the jars. It's not super quick. This isn't a huge batch of ghee, so it'd be quicker than when you do 25 pounds of butter, but it takes a while. So we're cleaning the kitchen while the butter's doing its thing. We need to clean the front of the microwave, too. Alrighty, about 12 minutes later, it looks like all of the butter is melted. Look, see right there, that is a piece of paper from the wrapper. Come here. Come here. Don't be stuck. Ugh. See? Piece of paper. Now I have to fish out my spatula. Sometimes. Where are you? I can feel you in there. Oh, there we go. All right, so it's all melted. Give it its final little stir, and then we're just gonna let it start to boil. All right, there's my burner on medium. That's what the flame looks like. It's medium for me, it's pretty high. I've burned a lot of things on medium. All right, 10 minutes later, and we are bubbling, baby. We're foaming and bubbling. Look at all that foam. That is some foamy foam. All right, there's no foam skimming at this juncture. We just need to let this settle down a bit. All right, so with turning the heat down a tiny bit, it's settled back down. You can see up the side of the pot how high it went with its foamy bubbliness. And you can kind of see what's the residue, see what's left on the side of the pot. That's some of those milk solids. So now you have a good view of the foam situation when it's not all boiling insanely. I don't think we got any of those huge water bloops from below. I think we just have a nice boil going there. Look at that. Do we see any more butter wrapper floating around? You can see the specks of milk solids churning through this melted butter. You know, it's not clarified yet. It is not clear. We cannot see through it. And we have our fine foam situation. That's a fine foam. And we just let it continue. Oh, oh, I just saw a piece of paper. Where did you go? Where did you go? Well, we'll get you when we strain. Wait a minute. I think I saw it come through again. It's going to circle through as it boils. Come back. Piece of butter wrapper paper. Oh, there it is. There it is. Come back. Come back. I saw you. 
It's that corner piece that always gets stuck in the end of the butter that has the little black line on it. All right, anyway, so we're going to let this continue to do its thing, unmolested, unbothered by us. It'll do its little boily, bubbly business. We're going to have the foam going on. We've got the milk solids churning around. They're going to sink eventually. That's what we're waiting for. Oh, oh, butter wrapper thing, come back. Dang you. All right, we're now at 1055. And the butter is bubbling away. You can really see the milk solids churning around. Got lots of foam. I think we're going to skim off some foam. Pretty soon those milk solids should be sinking to the bottom. I turned the flame down a little bit. Alrighty, we're going to skim off a little bit of the foam. Some people skim it off with a little sieve, so they're just kind of getting the foam off the top but not getting any of the melted butter underneath, but I'm not that worried about it because I am not throwing my foam away. I'm keeping my foam to eat. I wish this was Smell-O-Vision because I have to tell you, it smells fantastic. It does help to get some of the foam out of the way so you can see what your melted butter is doing. I still see milk solids churning around as the butter boils. So we're not quite there yet. So we let it keep churning. Oh, there's that piece of paper. Come back. Ooh, ooh. Oh, I got you. I got you. Wait a minute. Did I let you go? Nope, I got you. Hi. Got you. Ha ha. Got it. I literally just dropped the phone and it almost went into the ghee pot. All right. I think we can see just moments later that it's starting to be clearer. The milk solids are sinking to the bottom. Let me try this with a flash to see if you can see it better. We've got a lot more foam forming too. All right, I put the flash on and I think, well, I can still see milk solids churning around, but it is starting to clarify. The butter is getting clearer, but we've got to let more of those milk solids sink. Got the foam going again. The foam, I think the foam goes from a very fine foam and then it becomes kind of a thicker foam as you go along. You gotta watch your foam. But yes, the milk solids are still churning around, so let's just let's just watch it for a while. Without dropping the phone into the pot. All right, guys and gals, I think we've gotten there. I can see through it to the bottom. So I'm going to call that clarified. I can see some brown on the bottom. And I feel like the ghee itself is starting to richen in color, shall we say. The smell really reminds one of one of those little lobster dives in Maine that are always packed in the summer with tourists getting their yummy, yummy lobster. Oh, the smell of drawn butter. All right, can you see through? Can you see through to the bottom? I think you can. So, we're gonna turn off the heat. We have reached clarification. All right, we're gonna take our jars out of the oven and then we are going to strain our ghee. It's ghee! It's ghee! It's glorious ghee! And then fill our jars. Easy peasy. So here's the pitcher. Here's my sieve with some cheesecloth. 
And we are going to ladle the ghee through the cheesecloth into the pitcher, and then we can pour directly into our jars. And hopefully we won't knock the pitcher over all over the stove. I'm not saying I've done that before, but I might have. Using my ladle. My pitcher mouth is a lot smaller than my sieve, so I need to really make sure to pour the butter down in the right in the middle so that it doesn't strain too far out and just drip down the outside of the pitcher. Not saying I've done that before either, but I might have. You learn as you go, and you have to develop your systems that work for you. This stuff looks amazing. It's so clear. Why, it's crystal clear. It's ghee clear. That should be the new phrase instead of crystal clear. Ghee clear. Could I make it any clearer to you? Oh, no. You've made it ghee clear. So you know what you need to do, Amy? You know what the job entails? Oh, yes. It's ghee clear. I don't know, crystal clear has a nice ring to it because of the alliteration of the C's. But ghee clear is good too. I mean, are crystals really as clear as ghee? I don't think so. You can see the milk solids in the middle that browned because they were more directly right above the, the heat. I'm not gonna say scrubbing the pot out when you're done is the funnest job ever. But it's worth it. I was going to say it's like childbirth. Also not necessarily the funnest thing to go through ever. But worth it in the end. When you get ghee out of it. Or I mean a baby. When you get a baby out of it. Or two. Alright. So we are straining. And so far I don't think I've screwed up too much. I think it's working well. All right, can you see in there? Can you see straight to the bottom? I know it looks kind of black on the camera in the video. It's, I'm not just saying this, it's not black in real life, it's brown, but I know it might look black and therefore burned, but it's not, it's brown and therefore browned. Ooh, there's lots of nice milk solids on the bottom. Put that there for the moment. Look at that. Look at that. That is gee clear. That is liquid gold. Now we will very carefully pour it into our jars and try not to slop it down the outsides of the jars and all over the pan. Not saying I've done that before, but I might have. Look at that. It's usually about a pound of butter per pint jar. A pint's a pound the world around as we like to say. Okay, we need to strain some more. I can feel just the weight of that now with the melted butter that is stuck in the cheesecloth. I mean, that would go to waste. We have got to squeeze that out. All right. You can, of course, just pick up the pot and pour it through the sieve, but when you have a whole lot of ghee, well, and it's boiling hot, of course, the pot's heavy and you don't want to slop it around and make a mess. Not saying I've done that. I'm going to keep ladling it until it's a little lower, and then I will lift up the pot and pour it. It's also a little harder for me to aim right into the middle of the cheesecloth when I'm pouring directly from the pot. So I like my soup ladle method, but we, we are getting low into the pot here. All right, say a little prayer. Keep your fingers crossed.
so that's what the bottom of the pot looks like and we're gonna scrape it scrape it scrape it get as much out of there as possible so we can put it on our toast all right that's about all that picture was going to take we'll wipe around the rims quickly 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 so we can get our lids on jars didn't feel all that hot coming out of the oven but ah, the boiling ghee feels hot for sure ah. and now we hope to hear that beautiful pinging sound and there we check in with the time. So that's how much time it took. So there we have milk solids and so forth left on the bottom of the pot. And I'm going to scrape, scrape, scrape it. Add all that to my little container of foam. Add some salt and make some toast. Look, the ghee comes out first. Drip, drip, drip. And I'm not going to say this is pretty the milk solid spread is not the most attractive it cools it congeals it looks like mm, i don't know not good but it tastes delicious and why would you waste it why would you just waste it why would you waste it all right, there we go. Salt, 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 salt. And salt, 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 salt. And how about a little more salt, 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 salt. You really do need the salt. Have I mentioned that? You need it salty. I'll stir it, but it's not gonna magically turn into anything terribly attractive. It's not horrible looking. It almost ends up looking like a vinaigrette, honestly, which is sort of weird. That is going to be so amazing on toast. And I think since it's oof, after 1130 in the morning, I deserve a little toast for breakfast. All right, we've got our cheesecloth. So let's just squeeze it and see how much butter would be wasted if we just washed that out. I don't see why you couldn't use the butter and soaked cheesecloth to, you know, grease a cake pan or something. If you're going to cook something, make grilled cheese sandwiches, rub it around the inside of your skillet. But look at that. That's how much? That's about an eighth of a cup of butter sloshing around there. Would have been wasted. And now, three hours later, after cleaning the whole house, toast with a milk solid spread. It's probably just the saltiness I love, but I love it. It's so good. And of course, I made bread because I know I'm cool that way. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this little gee making adventure. It's gee, it's gee, it's glorious gee. Hope you try it yourselves sometime if you get a really good deal on butter and want to stock up. I remember one time years ago, Whole Foods had a sale on butter for a dollar a pound. And I went in and said to them, I'd like to buy a whole case. And they looked at me like I was crazy, like nobody else in fancy Princeton, New Jersey wanted to buy a whole case of butter at a dollar per. But I did. And I think it was about 30 pounds of butter. And I remember after going through it all, which did not take very long, you would think it would, but it didn't. I remember thinking, God, I wish I'd bought more. I wish I'd bought 10 cases when I had the chance. You got to jump on those sales because why that one's never been repeated that I know of. Oh, my stomach just made such a weird noise. <laughs> Isn't that a delight?
Popable jars pinged. That was very exciting. All kind of together, like a little chorus. Ping, 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 ping. So to you, I say cheers. It's gee. It's gee. It's glorious gee. Gee whiz, that's a great video.